In this short video, I will explain what a network sniffer is and how it can be used. A network sniffer is a tool that enables you to view the traffic that flows through a network. An example of such a program is Wireshark or OSPI or Microsoft Network Monitor. Each of them have their specific features. This example will be focused on Wireshark. It's free, open source and cross-platform. When you start the program, you will see a list of network interfaces and addresses that correspond to them. In this given example, the IP address is this one, and you can see that some activity is happening on this interface. We can click Start and see what that activity is. Apparently, the system is idle from the user's perspective, but in practice, a lot of stuff happens in the background. As you can see, packets flow without my doing anything in particular. I can click on one of them and the program will display it to me in a human readable form. In the lower part of the screen, you see the raw data. And in the middle here, we have this human readable representation of that data. The sniffer will parse the message and show each piece of it in a form which is much easier to understand. Let's see a sniffer in action. I will open a web browser and view a web page, for example, slash dot. Web pages are served to us by HTTP servers via the HTTP protocol. You can learn about this protocol by reading the corresponding RFC. For example, in the case of HTTP, it's RFC 2616, if I recall correctly. You can see that it's quite a long document and there is a lot of reading material here. So this is the long way of understanding how HTTP works. Since reading the documentation isn't always an option, we will try to take a shortcut and use a network sniffer to understand how HTTP works. As you have seen, a lot of messages are captured during a network sniffing procedure. That's why we should use a filter to simplify our task and display only those messages that are concerned that are concerning us. HTTP works on port TCP80, so this is the filter we are going to use. I have now highlighted one part of the sniff. And if you look here in this area, you will see how a network stack looks like in practice. The currently highlighted area is what covers the application layer, the top of the network stack. Underneath that, we have the transmission, the transport layer. And this is where the TCP protocol is, is being used. Below that, we have the network layer which is where IP is acting. And at every step, you can look inside and see the parsed header of that particular protocol. Looking at this is much easier than looking at, at this part. But currently, this is outside, our, outside the scope of this research. Let's focus on the HTTP part. Wireshark has an interesting feature called follow stream. We can select the packet that it's that is interesting to us and it will display the conversation to us. The part highlighted with red is what the browser sent and the part highlighted with blue is what the server responded with. This is what an HTTP GET method looks like. You can learn about each of these parameters by reading the RFC, or you can make educated guesses about them just by trying to understand what they mean. For example, user agent followed by 
Opera version number and operating operating system version is probably a parameter that tells the web server who I am. In this case, I'm a web browser named Opera 9.80 running on a Windows NT platform. Then we have other stuff about languages, supported character sets, and so on. If you look at the response, you will see some information about the server itself. Now we know that slash dot is served by Apache 1.3. Um, we also can see some other details. For example, the web server will send compressed responses. We can infer that by looking at this part. Um, we can also take a look at the first line. 200 OK means that the response, the request was served uh, successfully. If you scroll down, you will see the response itself. In this case, it's the body of the of the web page. We can parse the HTML code in our mind and imagine what the web page looks like. What the browser does is that it receives the response given by the server, parses it as HTML and then displays it to us in a nice and easy to understand form, such as, such as this one. Up to this point, we can conclude one very simple thing, that a web browser is just a program that uses sockets to communicate with the server and send messages such as this one in order to get responses such as this one and then analyze those responses and display them to us in a human readable form. Now let's take a look at another example and try to understand how a file can be downloaded using HTTP. We shall now start another capture. and try to download a file. For example, this one. As it is being downloaded, I will stop it, wait for a while. I will then resume the process and I'll stop it again. This is the HTTP request which we're interested in. Now let us try to take a better look at it. In the first line, we see get, which tells the server that we are trying to obtain an object, followed by a path, which happens to be the path or the download link for the object we're trying to download, followed by an HTTP version which our client supports, and in, in this case the client is Opera 9.80. Once the response is sent, I mean the request, the server will respond to us in the following way. First we have the header in which we can find some interesting details. First of all, 200 OK tells us that the request was processed normally. We can also see the size of the response. In this case, it will be the size of the file. And underneath that, we have the response itself, which happens to be the raw data of our file. If you scroll, you will see the bytes which make that file. Let's close this one and find the other part of the download, specifically when I, when I stopped it and then resumed it.
Okay, there it is. Let's do the same thing. When you resume a download, you have to tell the server that you want to obtain the object, but you want to receive just a part of it, not the whole thing. Otherwise, you would simply have to download from scratch. This is what the browser sent to the server when I pressed the resume button. If you take a look at the request, you will see an interesting bit here. Range bytes equals then a number followed by a minus and then something else. This is how the browser tells the server that only a specific piece of a file needs to be downloaded. You can also note that in this case the server responded in a slightly different way. The response code is 206 and the message that corresponds to that code is partial content. And you can see what is the size of the remaining piece that the server will try to send us, followed by the data themselves. So this was the easy way of finding out how to resume a broken download. The long way to do that would be to examine the RFC and find where this action is being discussed. There you are. In section 3.12, we see that as of version 1.1 of HTTP, a client, can, a client can request just a part of the file rather than the whole thing. And this is a formal description of how to tell the server that you want to receive just a specific subset of the object rather than the entire object.